In this video we are going to see three different sides of Kuala Lumpur. Old Chinatown where I almost got scammed at the market. The main city's attraction Petronas Towers where you feel like you are transported to New York with skyscrapers and luxurious malls around you everywhere. And the third side of busy Kuala Lumpur beautiful botanical gardens where we even saw a water monitor swimming but almost no tourists. If you are new to the channel, my name is Olga and together with my husband Rene we are exploring countries in Southeast Asia to see if we can make one of them our home. We just spent a month in Vietnam and in Thailand and now we made it to Malaysia. And we are sending three postcards from every new country that we visit. If you want to get a chance to win a postcard from Kuala Lumpur, Please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment where do you think we should visit in Malaysia. In the next video I will announce the three winners. When we landed in Kuala Lumpur we were in for a surprise because we had to wait for an hour and a half at the immigration. The staff at the airport though did take care of people, they were giving out free water bottles to everyone. And the reason for such a queue was that actually on that day the weather conditions were bad and the planes could not land for some time, so then when it all cleared up they all landed at the same time and thus creating such a big line at the immigration. But from there getting from the airport to our new apartment was very easy. We could book online the tickets to the public train that takes you right from the airport to the city center. We had no issues at all, the trains are nice, clean and modern, but we had no issues up until we checked into our apartment. On the outside it looked quite good and on the pictures when we booked it, but the reality was a bit disappointing because the apartment itself is not what we expected. We will talk about it in our room tour video. But on the positive side the views are amazing and we also have an infinity pool with a view to the most popular attractions in Kuala Lumpur. But for now, let's uh, start exploring the city. We are living right next to the train station, which makes it convenient to go around the city. And the transportation fees are quite low. Our first destination is Chinatown. And in the new city, of course, it can be challenging in the beginning. But what makes it easier in Kuala Lumpur is that English is spoken quite often and many locals speak at least a bit of English and quite some speak very good English, which for foreigners makes it easier to go around the city if you need to ask directions or something like that. Or at the station, for example, if you need to buy a ticket, you can always uh, be confident that the staff will be able to help you and they will speak some English. But the main challenge for us was this uh, maze of uh, crossings, bridges and we couldn't find an exit at the station for quite some time. There are directions of course and they are also in English. But we did see that we are not the only ones that some other tourists couldn't find it, the exit. But once you spend more time in the city and have more experience it does get easier. And finally we made it to Chinatown, it is one of the oldest parts of the city. We already noticed how colorful this neighborhood is, with all the artworks and temples, both Chinese and Indian. Just walking the streets we do notice many restaurants, some of them are open while others couldn't reopen after all the restrictions. We also haven't seen any street food vendors. We start wondering why is that, because you do expect it in Chinatown. We did think that probably it is because of all the restrictions, uh, people lost the customers and now they cannot reopen. But we of course don't know for sure and if uh, any of uh, locals are watching us, maybe you can tell us in the comments what was happening in the last three years. We finally made it to one of the landmarks in Chinatown, the Indian temple. And it's a beautiful temple, but unfortunately when we were there it is uh, undergoing a restoration. And you have to know that when you are planning to visit a temple like that, you have to be dressed appropriately and you will need to take off your shoes. We got inside into one of the Chinese shops selling uh, New Year's decorations and all kinds of stuff uh, for celebrations. 
And what surprised us is that already back then we thought that prices there are relatively high and it only confirmed when uh, later on our trip we visited uh, some shopping malls and there in the shops we saw the same stuff for a bit cheaper. But it's definitely interesting to see uh, these kind of shops. There you might be able to find something that you won't find in a mall. Overall, in Chinatown you can see many colorful buildings and restaurants and it's definitely must-see if you're visiting Kuala Lumpur. But this time we actually didn't see that many tourists. We did see some, but it wasn't too crowded and usually in Chinatown, for example in Bangkok, it is very crowded and that's what we usually expect going there but here at least right now we would say it was quite relaxed and at that time we weren't hungry so we didn't go into any of the restaurants but i would say next time if i find myself there i would make sure to be hungry because the restaurants they were looking quite inviting and they were not only chinese restaurants there were even korean restaurants and japanese restaurants and western food restaurants as well so there is uh, quite a variety one of the main attractions in chinatown is of course uh, the market street and we didn't plan on doing any shopping, but still, I think it's one of the attractions, one of the places that's really interesting to see, the hustle and bustle, how just life goes there. We were also kind of expecting some street food stalls, which we found only maybe a couple. And most of what was sold in the market is uh, fake uh, counterfeit products. We did not check on quality, I cannot comment on that, but uh, in case you do not know, you have to be aware that uh, traveling with a counterfeit item in some countries, it could be against the law. Of course, you might never be checked if the item is original, but you have to know this, you have to have this information, so you will make your own decisions. There is another market under the roof, especially if it's raining or if it's sunshine outside. You might want to be under the roof in this market. Overall, I would even recommend going there. You can find uh, many souvenirs as well as arts and crafts. And I did really like the atmosphere here. Although this is actually the place where it happened, I almost got scammed. At least that's my impression of what was going on. As I already told you, we are sending postcards from every new location and here are so pretty ones. I stopped to check them out and as well as make this video that you're watching now. And at that moment, uh, Renee went to men's room, so I was alone. And quite often, uh, female tourist alone is a target. It's not just in Kuala Lumpur, it's in every big touristy city. It can be in Paris or New York. So I was approached by a man. He looked like he's a local, but of course I cannot be sure because Kuala Lumpur is a very multinational, multicultural city. He spoke to me in English and at first I couldn't understand, but later I figured out that he is offering to take a video of me with uh, the postcards. And he wasn't holding a camera, he meant it that he would take my phone and make a video of me. And uh, in a foreign country, I would say every tourist should be cautious. I mean, of course, I do not want to blame an innocent man who just wanted to do something nice. But my feeling, my gut feeling was, is that he just wants to take my phone and run away. So I tried to say no as nicely as possible, uh, but, but he continued to kind of push me into it. So I just started to say, I'm just waiting for my husband to kind of let him know that I am not alone. Then he proceeded to where I am from and uh, usually this question <laughs> quite often raises suspicion. It might sound like an innocent question but a lot of scams actually start with that. And he asked me several times and at that moment I just... I did not want to just walk away because I was waiting for Renee. I didn't want to uh, let him walk out and not see him that I'm there. I didn't want to just walk away because I was waiting for Renee, but I did not know how to finish this conversation either. So I just said that my English is not so good. And at that moment, he just turned away and started walking away quite quickly. 
So I will say again that I do not want to blame uh, a man that uh, maybe could have been just wanted to be nice. By my feeling was that is he indeed does want to steal something from me. And I would honestly be curious what do you think about it if you're a local or if you're a foreigner. Like in that kind of situation, what is the best approach? Because to be honest, I'm not very used to these situations and we quite often are together with Renee or I'm just uh, uh, walking around with a face where people don't approach me. So yeah, let me know what you think. And don't forget to leave a comment if you want to win one of the postcards. And as I said before, we didn't find any food stalls at this market, but on the first floor, there is a really good food court where you can try all kinds of local food as well as some Thai food and we actually settled on the bento boxes ourselves. Next, let's take a taxi and you can do it with a Grab app. The prices are very affordable. And now we are right next to the most popular spot in Kuala Lumpur, Petronas Towers. It is in the city center of Kuala Lumpur and it's a point of attraction for every single tourist. Basically, you don't want to come to Kuala Lumpur and miss the towers. So when we were there, of course, there were so, so many people. But I must say that even though there are crowds of people, it is still a nice and pleasurable experience. You have your towers, all the skyscrapers, and you have a green park with a fountain. Just walking around there, it's very nice and relaxing. And of course, everything they say about shopping in Kuala Lumpur, it's true. In the city center, you can find a huge mall with all the premium luxurious brands inside. So definitely, if you need to buy something, this is your place. If you want to visit the viewpoint at Petronas Towers, I would recommend booking your tickets online ahead of time. Otherwise, you might be stuck in a queue for hours and hours. We decided not to go there this time because we have our own amazing view from the infinity pool in our apartment building, which we will show you in one of the next videos. And the pro tip for everyone who wants to make pictures with the towers, just uh, walk further from them uh, a little bit where there is less people. And that way you will be able to make a clean pictures without too many people around you. This amount of people is like nothing compared to what you have right in front of the towers. And here you can actually have a better, much better view. So here's a life hack for you that Renee found by chance. Yeah, there a bit further, we stood and made quite some pictures with no people in the background, no nothing. And Renee got us some water. So the question is, how much? Speechless. What? Speechless. Speechless. No, one, one fifty. One fifty. One fifty. Yeah, the sum, okay. It's a bit less than fifty cents. Yeah, it's the same as everywhere else in, in these shops. We do have the steps. Oh, steps. Yeah. Haven't seen them much yet. But yeah. This no. is the first time. Yeah. Well, there the... is a bicycle road. Yeah. Other than that, I'm also not so sure how safe it is. How safe? Yeah. Well, it is yeah, dedicated. On the, bicycle, on the bicycle road. Ah, you mean... Oh, here you already see that there's a yeah. bike on. Yeah, might be not the safest. That's why you don't see the people. Yeah. Even the traffic is really bad. I took a taxi to KLCC, to the Petronas Towers, and yeah, at some point it was just like this. <laughs> So I got out and walked. Yeah. But yeah, this is the megapolis for you with many, many people in one place. Megapolis. Megapolis. Metropolis. Rapid KL, that's one of the public transport options. Yeah, looks nice. Restaurant. <laughs> 
it's in even interesting to see a low-rise building next to all the skyscrapers. And there we see a Ferrari. Where? There. There? Oh. Yeah. Don't go not, away. Not so Give us a ride. <laughs> well, it looks like like everyone else it will be stuck in traffic there. Well, I, I bet being stuck in traffic in a Ferrari is still nicer than in Ford Focus. <laughs> Yeah, but it does give it a nice feeling to have all the greenery even yeah. though there's such traffic and of course nice to have sidewalks <laughs> and here they already make the sidewalk the bicycle road bicycle and walking but looks like not many bicycles yeah how do you feel after Phuket? coming to all this skyscraper city yeah well where we are now it's really busy so here i'm getting a headache again <laughs> but the area we live it's relatively okay actually i mean we do have a highway in front of us which is always busy but that's not as bad well i think here it's a bit uh, traffic the traffic is so overwhelming mm -hmm. that it's getting yeah. a, a lot. Yeah. But all in all, the one in a lifetime, well, not one in a lifetime, but experience that we don't have all the time. Yeah, no, for sure, as a city, Kuala Lumpur is a beautiful city. And I definitely would not want to miss it. Very green. I mean, despite all this traffic and all the skyscrapers they did preserve a lot of greenery which does create a feeling of a tropical yeah, and quite some construction still going on you wouldn't believe that there's still space for it but there is no yeah, here it's, it's getting quiet <laughs> finally yeah. so just behind us is the traffic and here it's like we are walking into a forest so if you want to live right next to the television tower you book yourself a room corner room in the Oasia Suites or if you go a bit to there in Indigo. Indigo I think it's uh, kind of not finished yet well, perhaps if you're watching at some point in the future it's finished <laughs> yeah. yeah but I would go for Oasia Suites. It's taller and higher. <laughs> oh, and that that one, the new one, is also visible from here yeah. with a pointy end. It should be also rotating the the restaurant there up top. I think. Yeah. Yeah, the tropical forest adventure continues. This is also hotel. Pacific. Regency. Re Regency. Yeah, Pacific Regency. This one looks quite old. And this is how it is walking in Kuala Lumpur, in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. And you feel like you're walking in the jungle. And then a lion from the back. <laughs> All in the jungle. <laughs> Away from the major traffic line, it's much more quiet. Hop on, hop off, but. It looks like... Wow, it is something, definitely. <laughs> yeah, people are having fun. I would also recommend visiting Kuala Lumpur for someone who is interested in the architecture because even me, who is not really knowledgeable in it, I can already see how diverse the city is, how many of the styles are all together in one city. Here we are transported into the USSR a bit. Feeling this. Albania, Tbilisi feeling? Yeah. Yeah, well, only bigger, bigger and higher. Well, in, B in Belisi it is indeed, yeah. it can be, there is a area where it's... The only difference is, although in Georgia we also saw, this is higher and everything, but it, in Georgia you also see it, the old communist Soviet buildings. 
that just shows that this city adopted everything and welcomed everything. KFC in a, what looks like an old colonial building. Tramline, McDonald's, Rene. <laughs> yeah. And there again something like uh, from the Soviet era building. Fun? Yeah, you can ride the train, but first you have to figure out how you get there. How you get there? <laughs> Yeah, for every newcomer into the city. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a struggle. Or maybe it's just us, who knows? Oh, behind us there. Also, Oriental building. And right on top of it is something new. So it's completely eclectic, just old and the new and the new and the old and in the middle and all the styles. And now that we've seen the busy city center of Kuala Lumpur, let's check out the beautiful, relaxing botanical gardens. And one thing that's uh, really important for us in every city is how walkable it is. In our daily life, we like to get uh, some walks from one location to the other. And in Southeast Asia, that can be quite a problem, especially now we came from Thailand, where even in Bangkok, it's not very walkable. But in Kuala Lumpur, the situation overall, I would say, is better. Especially in KLCC, in the central part, you can walk. But when we wanted to walk from our apartment to the botanical gardens, for some time we did have a sidewalk, but at some point it just ended and there was nothing but re some residential buildings and trees and roads between them, so no sidewalk at all. So we walked for something like five minutes and then we gave up and took a taxi. So our impression, uh, Kuala Lumpur is walkable, but not everywhere. And when we got to Botanical Gardens, we finally got what we wanted. We could walk there without any problems. There are sidewalks, there are promenades. And the surprising part for us was that there was almost no tourists. So it feels like most of the people check out the city center, the Petronas Towers, but they don't really go to the botanical garden. And there are no big attractions to see, but you do get to be with the nature. We saw squirrels, we saw birds, we saw many fishes and turtles and even a water monitor. So in general, I would really recommend uh, this place to everyone who likes to have some peace and quiet in the big city. But don't forget the mosquito repellent, that's important. In our next videos in Kuala Lumpur, we will show you our apartment and we'll give you an overview of our costs rental, groceries, uh, eating out, and other expenses. And of course, let us know in the comments if you want to see something about Kuala Lumpur that I haven't talked about yet.